Hello, everyone. My name is Josh Suarez, and I am a program manager with Protocol Labs. Today, I will be talking to you about an open metaverse. But before I start, I would like to thank WIPO again for the invitation. It's truly a pleasure to be here before all of you and also among people who have thought about this topic far more than I have. So where do we start a discussion around openness in the metaverse? Inevitably, we start with Snow Crash. And yes, it's a trope, and yes, it's a 30-year-old work of fiction that's not meant to be taken as a guide, but it also crafted a term around which we're having this very event. In Snow Crash, the metaverse and the streets have millions of simultaneous users. Among the 1% wealthiest people on Earth, many of which spend a lot of waking hours in this virtual world. And this world is controlled by one single entity. But let's set that aside for a moment and come back to reality. I was in Brussels recently, and there were these ads around about training surgeons on the metaverse. And this might be a very worthwhile application, but I think we can all agree that's not necessarily the same metaverse as in Snow Crash, at least not now and probably not in the foreseeable future. And that brings me to my first point. A lot of what we're discussing today depends significantly on what the metaverse ends up becoming. While it's easy to discount the practical relevance of having this debate at this moment, it might just be the right time to build solid foundations. Now, is it essential for a surgical training platform to be built on open principles? Probably not. But is, is that important for a virtual world in which millions of people live, work, and play? I would say the answer in that case is obviously yes. So let us focus on that scenario, the one of a comprehensive platform for interaction among humans. And here is, I guess, the first bit of good news. That outcome seems unlikely, both due to competitive landscape and to fundamental limits on scalability. It's, it's really hard for a single platform to be everything to everyone at a planetary scale while still maintaining real-time performance. So we're probably not getting exactly that. And instead, what we might get is a set of platforms split across geographies or topics or cultures or philosophies or really just ownership lines. I would claim that's already an improvement, but this scenario still raises major questions around things like interoperability, inclusivity, security, privacy, and property rights. And that's without even getting into topics like brain-computer interaction and the problems it presents. These concerns all become more important the more central the metaverse becomes to our economy and to our society. If we believe that it will be central, then an open architecture is really just a fundamental starting point. Now, while I'm obviously in the open camp, I will qualify that by saying that decentralization isn't the holy grail. And decentralization, especially trustless decentralization, is hard, it's expensive, and it's very inefficient. You can almost always, at least on the surface, come up with a better, faster, and cheaper solution by exploiting centralized control and economies of scale, and you can also capture more value that way. However, interoperability and openness are what got us the internet instead of AOL, so that still seems like a worthy trade-off. As an aside, I just thought it, it would be appropriate to let a generative AI model dream the concept of each slide in the context of a metaverse, so there you go. So how do we get to open? Standards are, of course, a good starting point, and metaverse standards are early but not a novel idea. Last year, the Metaverse Standards Forum was created. It now counts 2,500 member organizations. And while it is explicitly not a standards development organization, it brings together large corporates, startups, nonprofits, with interests ranging from hardware to content. It also includes actual SDOs like IEEE and W3C, which are already stewarding standards in the field, or at least starting to. Those items that you see on the slides are the priority topics as ranked by the members of the forum. I think it's worth noting that they're also not all technical. But formal standard setting isn't the only approach, and there are also open source de facto standards, which we get via shared software libraries, soft consensus, and the organic spread of open protocols. And this is the core tenet of Web3, or the decentralized web. 
Their soft standards are often developed by a group and then end up being broadly adopted across the community. You can think, for instance, of ERC721, which is the Ethereum standard for NFTs. Blockchains, by the way, face similar challenges as the metaverse. A single blockchain cannot scale to support everything, and the future will necessarily be diverse. So what you also see in the space are a lot of cross-chain bridges and other efforts towards interoperability between what are, in practice, independent distributed systems. Then, of course, there are also very interesting questions around governance of open transnational systems that lack clear operators or even a clear jurisdiction. The central end is already a great early example of this as a Web3 native proto metaverse, which is governed by the centralized autonomous organization, also known as a DAO, and also adopts some or many open standards. Now, I'm almost at time, and of course, I have more questions than answers. I guess a good question on which to close is then, is this enough? It's not enough. I mean, openness is a base requirement. The internet is built on open standards, and despite all the good that came out of it, that hasn't stopped a mere handful of companies from acquiring near complete control over it, and in the process, over both our attention and our privacy. Effective regulation is also fundamental, and governments and international organizations have a strong role to play in enforcing basic rules beyond the technical aspects, ranging from IP to antitrust measures. But that, of course, is a topic that Chin Chin can definitely explore much better than I could. And luckily for us, she's going up right next. Thank you again for your attention.